Let me start this video by saying, if you have not watched part 1 of the SMP Earth Mystery, I would highly recommend it, as I am not going to be covering the information that is in that part. A link will be in the description, and there will be a card on the top right of your screen, so click on that if you haven't watched it yet. On this day, four players decided to go check out the end portal that was in the Antarctic Empire's base, but on their way, they decided that they should go check out the newly created Wilderness Faction, which had no leader and zero members, which was quite suspicious. No admin or developer had even spoke about the massive land claim, so they were intrigued. After flying to the claim, the four of them soon discovered a sundial. You know, one of the sun time teller things? They soon realized that they would have to complete some kind of puzzle in order to get a clue or an item. So they did the only logical thing, skipped the entire puzzle and glitched into a barrel beneath the sundial. After doing this, they accessed a barrel which held a book called Warren. This book held this message. But soon after taking the book, the group was attacked by a horde of zombies, and the book was removed from Reflex's inventory. Reflex decided he wasn't having any of this admin shit. So he glitched into the barrel again, and once again, yoinked the book. The group then started getting annihilated by lightning bolts, sent from the heavens, probably because they broke the rules of the space-time continuum. After a while, another book appeared in the barrel, and would you believe me if I told you Reflex glitched in again? Well, he did and he found a book titled Red Herring, which stated that any information in the original Warren book that they retrieved was no longer useful. After this, they went fishing to let Chip rebuild the sundial and sort of reset. They soon returned and found the structure on the sundial had changed in an attempt to stop people from glitching in, which you guessed it, Reflex found a way in and glitched the book out again. They found a new book, also titled Warren, but inside had a new code. The Heavens then found out about this mockery of their sundial, and soon smited one of the players to death, Rip Michael McChill. His items were destroyed by lightning, but Chip did refund him some diamond armor and a diamond pickaxe named Octangula. Then the group finally decided that they should solve this puzzle legit, and after some inspection, soon found a piece of map art underneath the western side of the sundial, which had the number 6000 written on it. They then flew out to the coordinates 6000 which they found nothing at because the 6,000 on the map art was referring to the amount of time it took for a dropper to drop an item, not a coordinate location. They went back to the sundial, and soon after triggered a dropper by sitting on a staircase, which released some TNT, an emerald block, and a bow named Octangula. After successfully solving the puzzle, they realized they now had the ability to break blocks on the shrine, so they started mining, and then found even more items. They found a god apple, the music disc ward, and another star. When Reflex arrived home, he played the disc called Ward, and discovered it played a theme song to the hit 1998 kids show, called A Little Curious. Let's recall the books that they found though, since those were the main clues discovered on this day. The first Warren book was decoded using the key holofractal, in a visionaire cipher. Laramie? Where'd you go? Where are you Laramie? Old Happy Jack is red in the face. Why'd you run off like that? Meet me in the Warren near the Creek of Crows. Big Prism, K-U-F-C. The second Warren book was decoded in the same way, which led to the results, Past Info Void, Warren is dead. You cheated, look elsewhere. The prize is not yours today. Look elsewhere, Big Prism. I know I said the countdown would lead to utter disaster, but I don't think anyone would have expected this. Guns? This is not the only thing added though. If you used inspect element on the page, you'd find the coordinates X 8641, Z 2361. And if you looked on the Dynamap, at these coordinates there was a weird face written into the ground. The ARG community then contacted many streamers, and eventually, I Am Spoon went on a journey to these coordinates, and found a weird face that was actually a crater with a river running through it. He found a buried chest with a music disc called Sheridan inside of it. Then he flew back home to play the disc. The disc played a jazz song, and some cafe-like conversation scattered throughout, but then at the end, a fart noise played. The ARG community then knew they had to run it through a spectrogram. They did this, and they found it read back the word Sheridan, a weird face, and then some random numbers, 
which they then put through a base 64 decoder to discover coordinates which led them to 15,888, 4,369, which was in Sheridan County, Kansas. Spoon then flew there to discover an office, deep underground, with an eerie presence. Let me tell you how the wiki describes it. There were four desks in the room, each with a potted dead bush and a computer. There was an iron door, three of the four walls with a weighted pressure plate to open it in the front. A framed map art piece of an octangula was over one of them. The fourth wall had a doorway leading to a small alcove. The walls were made of endstone bricks, the ceiling from smooth stone slabs and bricks, the floor from gray and red carpet, and the place was lit by sea lanterns. It also for some reason had a dog with a red collar sat waiting. The dog was unnamed, but tamed. Its owner remains unknown, but whoever it was is not coming back anytime soon, based off the looks of the place. After walking around the main room for a bit, Spoon decided to go through the door with the octangular near at first, which led to a room containing the Big Prism computer. Remember, both of the Warren books included the phrase Big Prism. When he stepped on the pressure plate to enter the room, the coded message was whispered to him which when decoded using the keyword Big Prism on a Visionaire cipher, led to the output Big Prism 1.0. Please enter the password. Spoon then explored the next room, and found two skeletons named Warren and Warden, which was proof that when Chip said Warren is dead, he was actually dead. Spoon then slaughtered the two skeletons and left the room. Spoon then entered the Eastern room and found two books in a chest, one titled Big Prism 1.0, which had chapters on dimensions, holofractals, holograms, curvature, and pseudoscience. The book appeared to be deteriorating. As the farther you read into the book, the more it was unreadable. The second book was titled Employees, and it had the names Mike Lincoln, Maria Camry, Jonas Rothschild, and Francine Colby, and they used the letters M and F to specify if they were male or female. Spoon then continued to explore the office, and found seven iron ingots and nine diamonds in the chest. In the boss's office, though, he found two barrels containing nine pieces of paper, seven diamonds, two empty maps, and an unknown map that showed the overworld location of where the office was. Eleven pieces of paper, an empty map, another seven diamonds, an emerald, a totem of undying, another unknown map, and a book. Unlike the other books in the offices, this one was written by Mike, not by Big Prism. It was titled PARP. Inside read, Daryl, what is a PARP? Mike. Then he discovered another barrel in the corner of the room, containing two pieces of paper, two empty maps, five diamonds, three emeralds, and a book called Big Prism, which was written by someone named Maria. Inside it read, Daryl, would it be possible for you to send me the new password for Big Prism? The firmware is ancient and needs an update. Just write it in the book and send it to me. Maria. The top barrel did not contain anything important. Spoon then headed over to the Big Prism computer. He tested the system by throwing a torch into the hopper, which gave him the coded message. Which when decoded read, I'm sorry, but that's the wrong password. You are one step away. Big Prism. Spoon then tried to put an unsigned book with the word PARP inside of it into the machine, which triggered the machine to play the Sheridan disc halfway through. He tried this again, but then got the message, invalid password, 10 more attempts remaining. Books must be signed. Big Prism. Showing that, after 10 attempts, there would be a lockout. Spoon then tried the same book again, but signed it, which got him the same message as before, but instead of 10 attempts remaining, there were 9. Spoon threw in the book, titled Prep by Mike, into the machine, and again, it failed, which gave him 8 more attempts or so he thought. Spoon then tried to put a book with the word Ausla, which was prep coded in a cipher, into the machine, which told him that he had 6.5 attempts remaining. What? That attempt counted for 1.5? He then flew back to his base, got some more items for the books, and then flew back to the office, this time with Grunk. Spoon then threw a book containing Ausla, titled Big Prism, into the machine, which then told him he had 5 more attempts remaining. They then tried a book titled Death because the book titled Big Prism 1.0 that they found earlier had a part in it that spoke about death, so they tried it. Again, this theory was also wrong, so they now had four attempts remaining. After talking with his chat for a bit, Spoon was then messaged that he had failed an attempt, and he had three more remaining attempts. 
which she was baffled about, since he did not throw anything into the hopper. Grunk and Spoon were then theorizing the password could be Fart Fart, mainly because the images were found on JunkieJanker.com, which were titled Fart. Before he could write anything in the book though, Spoon accidentally threw a book and quill into the hopper, giving them two more attempts. This time, they got their response incorrect password. Two more attempts remaining. You are brave. 13. Big Prism. Which made them believe that the password had to be 13 characters long. They were then led on by Ink T to believe the password was Laramie Online, but Grunk never got the chance to throw the book in, as the machine messaged them incorrect password, try again in 24 hours which led to the ARG hype dying down for that day. The next day, a player by the name of Sneak Snag was told by his chat about the ARG, and he quickly became interested. He wanted to help solve the mystery. After wandering around for a bit, his chat pointed him in the direction of the office, to which he flew over, and then he descended the staircase that Spoon had made the other day. Sneak walked around the office, but then Spoon entered his chat, and asked Sneak not to lock the system out again, as Spoon wanted to try to resolve the puzzle himself. Sneak denied, so then Spoon tried bribing him, to which Sneak also denied. Sneak then signed a book with the word fart inside it, which caused the machine to give him the message, too many failed attempts, try again in 24 hours, which reset the entire counter. Spoon was finally able to get on and quickly flew over to the office and met up with Sneak. Spoon told Sneak all about the passwords and stuff they had found in the office yesterday. They then discussed what the next password they would try would be. They agreed by putting the password Big Prism into the computer. Once they put in the book, the machine did not respond for a few seconds, until it spat out a book and a quill containing some scrambled code, which when put through a base 64 decoder, came up with some coordinates. After they flew to this location, they found a bedrock platform surrounded by ice. Sneak then dug at the exact coordinates given, and found a chest with an unsigned book, which had a coded YouTube URL link. And what did this link lead to? As of the recording of this video, not much has happened after that. So, where are we now? What is the theory for solving the mystery? Well, the wiki's theory is probably the most likely one. It basically goes as, this is a simulation. And SMP Earth is a simulation of the Earth. So basically, it's just trying to hint at the entire thing's a simulation, which I think is probably the most likely theory. Again, only time will tell what the true theory is, but I still think this is the most likely one. Thank you everyone for watching. Have an awesome day.